<laughs> Make me into a mountain, said the boy. Make me into a dove with iron wings so if someone shoots me, I won't feel it. I'll just keep flying. Make me into something God hears. I want to speak every language because I know he has to understand at least one. Would you give me arms strong enough for my father so I can stand up to him next time? Would you give me a mind that won't forget things worth remembering? Give me the things you know you'll never use because all things have purpose. I just want answers, he says. This boy is the accumulation of every spirit who refused to quit burning. He carries the sun and the shadow. He just turned seven. He tells me he's supposed to close his eyes when he sees something bad, but he tried it once, and he only had his eyes open long enough to see a blue bird share a worm with a black bird, which made him wonder why color mattered so much to people. I want to be the wind, he says. I want to be the feeling that gives others goosebumps. I want my fingerprint to be in the shape of a dragonfly. I, I want to be cobalt blue. His eyes are as innocent as the insides of angels. He wants to be everything he can imagine. And out of all the things I can think of, I just wish I could be more like him. He looks up to me as if the entire universe is my lover just because I can pronounce the names of dinosaurs and read the Encyclopedia Britannica. He thinks that I'm a hero and it makes me sad because I know we all had thoughts like kids when we were younger, but it seems like with every candle we blow it on our birthday, something greater than flames disappears. You know, Everything he tells me. Nah, I say. I, I only know what I've been taught. You know what you feel, and that's far more important. His head's still arched up, looking at me, smiling, even though he doesn't really understand what it is I'm trying to tell him. But that's not the part that scares me. It's knowing that he will someday. It's knowing in the next 10 years he'll be taught that no human can be made into a mountain or that the sun and moon don't really chase him around, they just appear that way. It's knowing that one day his heart will be broken by someone who didn't love him as much as he loved them or that his perception of the world will change from thinking of it as a ginormous place to play with too many trees you get to climb and too many puddles of water you won't get to jump into because he didn't have the time to calculating how much money he could make while drilling for oil or walking around with an umbrella so he won't get his dress suit all wet and dirty. I stare at him. I stare at his entire body from the white roots of hair follicles to the bottoms of his L.A. gears that light up while he walks, trying to understand him. He's looking at me doing the same, but he isn't wondering who I'm going to be. He's just trying to figure out who I am now. I want to tell him to not grow up and to quit blowing out the candles on his birthdays, but I know that age is inevitable. It's our perception that changes. So instead, I ask him this. I say, hey, do you like to swim, kid? And with the tongue of a sage, the seven-year-old boy tells me this. He says, yeah, it's my favorite thing. We can play sharks and mermaids. I can be the shark, and you can be the mermaid. As he grabs my hand, it leads me to the water. It's within this moment I come to understand myself in this life, and I watched the boy grow up to be something other than what he is. You see, he is a shark that lives somewhere in the mountains, and I am a mermaid. Too bad reality has a hard time accepting us for who we truly are. <laughs>